Buenas. 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 <laughs> Welcome back to the Film Posers YouTube channel. Today we are going to be reviewing One Night in Miami by Regina King. And our moderator will be Gabriela Burgos. Take it away. Hello, Merry everyone. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Today we are joined by a very special guest, and that is Rafi from Criticologos. Afternoon, good evening, and good night. Like, uh, like, uh, like, you know, one of my favorite movies. That I always like to do the, the intro that way. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Rafi, for those of you who don't know who you are. If you don't know who I, who I am, I don't know where you believe in, but <laughs> under a rock or something like that. No, Rafi Bellavilla, Criticologos.com. I've been doing I've been doing this for about 10 years already. Um, basically, what we reviews. I, we started doing that. Actually, we, start, we started poking fun of movies. That's how, we, that's how, that's how Critical was started. We, start, we started poking fun of, of uh, Inception and Back to the Future and Terminator. And then it evolved into what it is right now, which is basically a digital media outlet where we, we focus on, on movies, TV series, gaming, which I do it from time to time. Um, and now we're doing wrestling also because basically nobody wants me to do something, so I'll do it. So we're doing all, almost everything right now. Um, basically, we do we we focus on on movies, we focus on streaming and and TV shows, and we we're everywhere. We're everywhere. We're we're going global. Going, we will, you know we're reaching the masses. And you can find Rafi and Criticologos on Twitter and Instagram at Criticologos. Yeah, Criticologos on Twitter, Twitter, yeah, Instagram. And then YouTube as Los Criticologos, Twitch as Los Criticologos, or Criticologos.com. Just go to the dot com website and you'll see on the upper right everything. And all my stuff, I know people ask me part, I don't want to see the news. I just want to see your stuff. And you can find my specific reviews or whatever unboxing at RafiMediaVilla.com, which is a separate website. But basically, it's just mirroring whatever I put my stuff on Criticologos. So it's just people ask me that I don't want to see news. I just want to see your stuff. So there's no, is there nowhere, nowhere easier for me to find your stuff? So you just go to rafimedavilla.com and that's where you can find my reviews and, and unboxings and everything like that. Great. So Rafi will be joining us to talk about Regina King's directorial debut, One Night in Miami. It will be heading to theaters on Christmas day and on Amazon Prime on January 15th, 2021. So, One Night in Miami is directed, as mentioned before, by Regina King, and it is based on the play by Kemp Powers, and it was adapted for the screen by himself. Mm -hmm. And it is about a fictionalized meeting of Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, Jim Brown, and Sam Cooke in a Miami hotel room in February, 1964. So we had the opportunity to watch this film at the Scat Savannah Film Festival. And for me personally, it was my most anticipated film of the festival. I was very excited to watch it. And so what are your general thoughts on this film? Rafi, since you are our guest, what are your general thoughts? <laughs> First off, I gotta, I gotta, you know, I gotta thank you guys because I, have, I was completely unaware of, of, of this film. I think if it's not because of you guys and Caribbean Cinema sending me the email for everything that comes, that is going to, uh, you know, be on, on fine arts. I don't, I don't really know about, I don't really follow the fine arts, uh, 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 you know, release dates. So, I mean, in essence, I think it was, uh, I, I'm, you know, a really good there to totally view for her. I think I, I, that's, that's the one, the first thing that I gotta, you know, gotta put, uh, gotta put out there. I think the acting was also really good. I think overall production, this you know, design, um, you know, Mike Cup and the whole everything that has to do with the whole um, technical side of, of, of cinema. It was everything's everything really good. And then I'm saying this because you know it's basically one of Amazon taking a chance a chance on Regina, one of her first projects. And I remember distinctly seeing the Amazon Studios uh, Twitter handle. Uh, stating this is uh, a Jorina King stand account now, basically when they're promoting the, 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 when they're promoting now the, obviously the one in Miami um, movie, it's coming out on the 25th and then it's gonna come out on the 15th that you just said. So I, I, I found that really funny that, you know, they, 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 they took a chance on Regina, they, they stand behind her and they gave her, you know, the space and the, obviously the budget to do a film this size being her, 
year in our first film, which is something that we saw. I, we saw that the production set, you know, designing makeup and everything, all the different, you know, music given, we, we play a huge role for one of the characters. Everything that's, you know, it's the technical side of it, of it all, it, you know, it, you know, it plays out well. I mean, you can see it. And, and I think you can even see it on the trailer. You don't even have to see the movie to understand that everything that they, that Amazon and, and, and Regina, you know, um, you know, they, they did a really, really, a really, really good job in all and everything and all the, all the different, you know, technical aspects of the movie. But I did like the most is the, the, the narrative. I think it's, you know, I, I think I don't like, I don't like the most because I know it's a movie that's not, it's not for everyone. Not anyone's going to be able to, you know, stand, you know, and, 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 and really uh, focus and, and be, pay attention to the whole narrative of the movie because we have these four iconic, you know, historical people, uh, in essence, as the title says, spending a day in Miami discussing different sorts of, of, of you know, of, uh, of topics from life, religion, uh, and everything. So it, it, I think it was, I think the premises of it all was good. I, I mean, the, the intent was good. I know what she, what is a fictional um, day, but it's, I think the premises was, was everything good, but I just, you know, I felt, it ran a little bit too long, and then you were like, okay, already, I know where we're going, I know what we're trying to do. Let's spice it up, let's do something different, that it's not just having these people just chat about, you know, life and, and religion and, and their beliefs and, and what they want to do in you know, 10 years from now, or what are going to see this time, 10 years from now. I think, I, think, I, I think that's, to me, what's one of the, you know, the downsides of the, of the movie, it didn't really, I liked it, I'm not saying I didn't like it, but I just felt it ran a little bit too long, considering that basically the whole movie is just a conversation between these four iconic characters. Juan, what are your general thoughts? So just like Gabriela, uh, we will be running the Regina King Academy Awards campaign. Yes. It's, we have to see her at Best Director. Yeah. There is no other choice. We riot if we don't see her. Isn't that right, Gabriela? Yes, go to my Twitter. It is the official Regina Regina King Oscar campaign account. We will be retweeting. We will be yes. supporting. Yes. So I believe One Night in Miami is one of 2020's best acted films in terms of an ensemble. I think Regina King has given us a powerful story with strong and impressive direction, especially for a debut. The dialogue, it's gripping, it's relevant, it's fantastic, especially to the conversation going on now in society. Um, I do agree with Hafi that at one point the pacing got to be a bit of a problem. It, you know, it at one point it didn't know where it wanted to go, but once we got there, it was a great journey all the way. It was a little too long, just a little, not that much, but not enough for me to be like, I, like, I didn't like it. I really enjoyed it. I definitely recommend this. I do see it as an awards film that's worth seeing. And yeah, the only thing is turn up your volume a bit when you see it. It could have been the way we saw it at SCAD, but the volume was a little low and I had to like lend my ear so close to the computer. I'm like, am I hearing this right? Let me make sure. So if you can watch it on like a TV screen with a really loud speaker, perfect, you're set. Definitely worth your time and definitely worth watching and definitely worth keeping your eye out this season. No. So One Night in Miami is based on Kim Power's stage play that goes by the same name. It's a movie that is heavy on its dialogue and basically it's about the characters discussing their roles in their civil rights movement. The line deliveries are intelligent, very powerful, and it's relevant from today's day and age. However, the movie for me, I agree with Rafi and Juan, has some pacing issues. For the first two acts, it felt a little bit tedious to watch, and it took me until the third act to fully get my attention and get on board with it. But on the other hand, it definitely has some great ensemble cast, and their characters had their own dynamic and interactions. They were engaging and fun to watch. But definitely the ones that stick out to me was Leslie Autumn Jr. as Sam Cooke and Kinsley Ben Adair as Malcolm X. We could definitely see that they had chemistry on the screen and the scenes that they started to bicker with each other were the highlight of this film. Now, production-wise, the set and the costume designs 
really made the movie feel like the 60s. I thought that was another highlight of the film. The cinematography was great and it is without a doubt a remarkable directorial review for Regina King. Now, before watching this movie, I do recommend to do a little bit of research because if you don't know the characters, if you weren't paying enough attention in your history class, you're definitely gonna get a little lost watching this movie. Josie. Hi. <laughs> I definitely agree with a lot of the things said. I think uh, I just want to point out a few things that have been said and some that haven't. One of my favorite reactions to this movie that I saw online from people that saw it earlier was, um, you can tell that a movie is adapted from a play when you're like, huh, why are these, why have these people been in the same room for the past two hours? <laughs> it's and, true. <laughs> yeah, I remember at one point I'm like, yeah, this is definitely a play. They have been in the same hotel room for more, most of the movie, which is good when you're making a movie when you have a single location. And I think location-wise, they did a good job at that, managing like the setting. One thing that I really want to point out is that I loved, I think my favorite part of the film was the title card, which yes. is actually, I think that was one of the covers for the play when it was printed. So I'm very glad that Regina King added that to the film itself because I remember I got chills and we were all in the group chat like, oh my God, did you see that title card? But that emphasizes that as her directorial debut, I think she did a good job. However, it is not my favorite film from this year. I think it could have been better, which just gives me hope because there's a lot more room for her to improve. And if this was a good directorial de debut, I can't imagine what her best film will be. I, we're gonna be blown away. But acting wise, yes, absolutely loved it. My favorite performance was Kingsley Benadir and Leslie Odom Jr. as well, especially the end. Act three just brings mm -hmm. it all together. Yeah, that's, I, that's all I can say, especially adaptation wise, pacing. I, I totally agree with what's been said. Pacing was a little slow and you definitely feel time passing and adapting a stage play to the screen is an art form because there are some things that work on a stage that will not work in film. And I think there are some things they could have taken advantage of because being on, on the screen of film, you have more space to experiment and do more things that you wouldn't on a stage. And I think they did not take advantage of these opportunities, but still it was a good delivery of the story that they wanted to tell. Yeah, I agree with what you've said. I really love this film, especially the title card. Like, that that title card was, yeah, like Josie, I got chills. I freaked out. It was just art. And I feel like, for me, the directing was one of the strongest parts of the film. It just made it seem like such a close movie that you could feel as if you were in the room with those people. And I also really love, and I think that's part of the strength of the film, that they had the same playwright adapted for the screen. I think that's the reason why the film kept so much of the essence that it had when it was on stage, because it was the same person who knew the story. So I think it really helped the film that it, it was Ken Powers who stayed on board. And I really love, you know, that they also kept it in the same room because it's a film. They could have easily done it as if, hey, let's take a walk around the corner and talk in a park. You know, they could have easily done it, but they kept mm -hmm. it in the room, which made it so much better. It made it more intimate. It made it more impactful. That was something I personally enjoyed. And yeah, the first two acts dragged a little. And I'm not going to say they didn't, but I was really invested in the dialogue, in the conversations that they were having. And by the third act, like, I was... I was blown away. I even cried. <laughs> I'm a crier, but um, yeah, so I agree. I feel that Regina has so much potential. She blew me away with this, with her first film. I just, I can't even fathom what she will do next. I'm, I'm ready to run all of the campaigns for her. Like I ran her campaign for Watchmen. I'm running the this one for the Oscars. Like I will keep running her campaigns. I have no problem. In, in terms of performances, my favorite one was also Kingsley Benadir as Malcolm X. He, he knocked it out of the park. They were all great, mm -hmm. but he, he just nailed it. I just, 
If he doesn't get a best actor nomination, I will riot. It will, the posters will run up to the Academy and protest. Because if this film is like, can we just get Kingsley and Regina? Like, we are asking for those two. Mm-hmm. We're not asking, we are demanding. And maybe Leslie Owen Jr. Maybe. Yeah, he could easily be supporting. And script as well. I really love the script. Yeah. Because the thing for me with uh, Benadir is that I felt like I was watching Malcolm X. Yeah. He really embodied the character, which is like for this kind of movie, if you did not embody these people, it was going to fail. Yeah. And it did not, clearly. For sure. They chose, like, all of them were amazing. All of them nailed their characters. And I also really loved. You know the conversations surrounding religion and Muhammad Ali? I Mm -hmm. love that. Because I personally did not know much about that part of Muhammad Ali's life beforehand. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I was just really surprised. And how they handled it in the film, I loved it. And yeah, like, like Anna said, I do recommend if you're not really familiar with, you know, the history of these people, do read up on it a little, just so you're not confused. And just, you know, a little bit better when you watch this film because it is a fictional encounter but the people were real yeah especially talking about history for people like us and other people that weren't raised in the united states or were educated with the united states educational system um yeah definitely read up on these people because they are you will recognize the name malcolm x but there are some things that this film tackles that even i paused a couple of times and googled because i was genuinely curious and it enriches the story a bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. So talking a little bit more about the directing, is there something else that stood out to you other than the title card? Because I feel like that's the one moment that we're all impacted by. Is there anything else that you remember that really just caught you? I, I think if, I think the direction was smart. And I think, but again, uh, once again, I. I, I go back to Amazon giving Jorina the space. And this, to me, this is the most important part that the studio needs to give, give any, any you know, film director their space to do their thing. And that's what I saw. I saw uh, Regina give, you know, trying to stand out and, and you know, put in, putting these people you know, in the spotlight. And, and again, this, I, I know Sophia said and, and Josie about, you know, going back and storying these people, but that's what she did. Basically, she gave you a story lesson in, in, in this movie. She, she gave you a backstory of, uh, like you just said about, I had no idea about Muhammad Ali, how the, game, the, the name came about, and I found that so interesting. So I think the whole direct, directing was just Regina trying to, to you, know, put a, you know, put a premises in history, in, 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 in giving a history class and, each of each of each of characters, and then again, um, you know, focusing on the 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 theme of it all. So I think, I think for me, anything more than anything, it's just the space. I I felt that Regina felt, I felt she felt free. She felt relaxed with what she was doing, and I I I I would say with you, I would wish to be like a fly on the wall when they were doing that because I I could see I would would love to see what what the community was and in said because I that, I do feel it you see it on the on the on the on the pic in the, you know on the, on the movie when 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 everything's going on you just said you we were just in one we're just one one scene we're spending two hours in this set talking about different subjects but I just felt that she she was like relaxed with everything on. She, she didn't have any, anybody like looking over her shoulder. Hey, can you do this and do that? I felt really, I felt that everything that we saw from her was really organic and really genuine about it. So that's, to me, that's a huge plus. Juan? I completely agree with what Rafi said. I also love the color palette that Regina used. It felt so warm and so inviting. And it's like, this is great on the eyes. This is going to be a great time. I just really thought her direction was great. I agree with everything that's been said. And like Josie said, if this is where she starts, where she'll end up, force of nature. No one's going to be able to stop her. And that's exactly what we like to see. So other than I agree with Rafi and Juan, there's a thing that I want to add. I really liked how each character 
had a space to have a conversation with each other, especially like with Malcolm X and Sam Cooke. And then we have Malcolm X with Muhammad Ali, especially when they were talking about religion. I really like that they had their own little space that we just get to see and know a little bit more about them and made it more personal in a sense, especially in the third act when we get to see everything just blow up. So I really like how she directed um, the actors in the film. Josie? Yeah, to add to everything that's been said, I think my favorite part other than the directing or the acting is just the third act in general, mm -hmm. especially the very last moment of the film because it made everything worth it. Um, I just, we used to play that song a lot when at the bookstore where I worked. So just that moment, it, t it takes you back to probably, at, it just feels, it feels like a religious experience that moment. That's the best way I can say it. I really liked how she ended the film. Yeah. I really loved that part of the film too. That was the part that brought me to tears. It just, it kind of hit mm -hmm. for me. It just hit all of a sudden by that third act playing. And it's just it's how emotionally invested you were up until the very end when it, it just like emotions completely overtake you kind of like what how Jos I felt like when Josie saw Portrait of a Lady on Fire for the first time that she said that she had been carrying this the whole time until the end when she just like oh my god yeah the end credits came and I just started sobbing yeah. that's exactly how I felt by the time I finished this film for me it had a great emotional payoff and it's also kind of like not 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 to spoil but it's also if you do know the history of a certain character like you know how things end up going for that character after the credits roll which makes the whole thing even more emotional yeah the yeah. film has an extra emotional way yeah once you're aware yeah i also think this is a film that will grow on people it mm -hmm. reminds me a little bit of my experience with emma from this year who would have thought it came out this year wow 2020 <laughs> lasted 500 years Honestly. But, um emma i did not like it at the beginning i felt it dragged i felt it was slow but then after like five rewatches it's one of my favorite films of this year so i think that one night in miami once you get used to it once you fall into place with the pacing and everything and you give yourself to these characters it might be a favorite for a lot of people yeah for sure and I do think that, yeah, well, for me personally, what, one of the things that I did not like about my experience watching this film was that we didn't have subtitles or closed captions. And since, since it's a very, you know, conversation heavy film, I like to, you know, also have subtitles to make sure I'm not missing anything. It's also an accessibility thing. Like, I feel like everything should have closed captions. We've talked about this before. So I do need to rewatch this film because I want to make sure that I did not miss anything. And yeah, I agree. I feel like when I rewatch it, when it's available on Amazon Prime, I will love it more because I really loved it the first time. Like I don't think things are going to change. I, I think I'm going to appreciate it more um, upon my rewatch. So that those are our thoughts on One Night in Miami. Make sure to check out Rafi and Criticologos and follow them because they are awesome. They will make you laugh. <laughs> is, yes, there yes, anything, yes. is there anything you would like That's to add? We, 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 we try to make people live on, on Thursdays on Thursday night on Criticologos live, especially with... Uh, it's, 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 I like that show because it's basically, it's a uh, different, different um, generations. We got James, we got Mark, we got Paolo from Argentina, and then we got Christian and myself. And, and Christian and myself obviously are the, are the ones that are closest to age in, in, in the age gap. Everyone else is just basically older, older than all of, the, all, all of us. And, but it's, it's, a fun, it's a fun show because of it. I know it's just different perspective and, and, and everything. So yeah, we will most definitely make everyone laugh or, or, or mad 
we also make people mad with with our with our with our our, our statement. So yeah, but so keep keep a watch on Kutikalos Live every Thursday at six p.m. on basically Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, and all the different platforms. But you can also find it at Kutikalos. But I, I put the we put the live stream on Kutikalos.com, so people don't have to go anywhere. You can go to the website and find it. And you know, it should be fun. Go and come join us. You can chat with us. Your comments will show up on the on the live stream and, and people tend to like, you know, being part of, I, I like that, that people are part of the show. That's one of the things that, one of the things that do different in the area. So I do like people being part of the show. And so just come join us and have fun. Excellent. So you heard Rafi, go check out Critico Logos. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Hope you have a good one. And make sure to check out One Night in Miami in theaters or on on amazon prime whatever you choose whatever it's safe for you to do and oh yeah thank you all for watching like this video follow us on twitter and instagram at film posters subscribe to this channel and yeah have a good one see you bye, bye. bye. bye.